Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to show you how you can start taking custom properties into your Polymer custom elements. So we're going to make it so you can pass a value into your element and have that interact with the data inside of your element. Now, this example is going to be super basic, but it should give you an idea about how to get started using data to come in from custom properties. So let's get started right now. The first thing we're going to do is a really super simple property that just allows us to uh, add some text essentially. Instead of hello world, we're gonna be taking the property into our element and we're just gonna be outputting it directly. So to get started, the first thing we really need to do is we need to add a property to our Polymer object here. And we can do that simply by saying comma after our is, and we can add another uh, key here, which is properties like so and this is where you're going to put all of your properties now properties can be all sorts of things they can be strings numbers they can be objects they can even be booleans and we'll be getting into a lot of the cool stuff that you can do with declared properties in later videos but for the most very most basics we're going to start with something like in our hello world uh, is now going to be just outputting a name so we can have a property uh, be something like first name and notice how this is in camel case now what comes next here is what type of property it is now this is going to be a string okay now we have access now to be able to use first name in our element itself in our index.html we can do so by simply typing first and then notice hyphen name now because we did it camel case here uh, we have to do it this kebab or dash case, however you like to refer to this. Now we can go ahead and add my first name. So first name is equal to Scott. Now if you head to our browser and refresh, you're gonna see nothing really happens yet. In fact, actually let's get rid of the second hello world. It's just gonna make things confusing. Okay, so that's gone. So let's go ahead and let's use this data just in the element here. And so we can do that simply by saying bracket bracket. And now we can type first name in camel case like so. So now let's come back to our page and here we have our name. Cool, so let's go ahead and add another property. This is gonna be last name. I'm actually going to wrap this in another tag here. We're just gonna do an H2 and it's going to be bracket bracket like so and we can have last name okay now let's use this last name again by adding it to our properties we can do the same thing we can say it's a string okay like so and we can come to our HTML and we can say last hyphen name okay let me add my last name we spell it correctly. Okay, so we now can refresh our page and we see my first name and we see my last name. Now something that's interesting here, I'm not quite sure exactly uh, what's going on. If this is, I couldn't find a definitive yes or no within the documentation here. If anybody could find exactly where in the documentation, if it says it can or can't do this, let me know. Uh, Notice how when I take this H2, uh, the last name out of here, I put first name and last name in both inside of the H1 here. Notice how when I refresh, absolutely nothing works. I have no idea if this is a bug necessarily. Like I said, I, I, I read into the docs quite a bit and couldn't find anything that necessarily said this in plain English. But if anybody uh, did see that and I'm just misreading it, please let me know. A way you can get around this is simply by wrapping something in, let's say a span. So we can uh, wrap this in a span like so. Now in refresh, you'll see that Talinsky is output and we would have to, of course, I'll put my last name inside, or my first name inside of a span as well. I don't like this. Uh, this isn't my favorite thing in the world. However, 
uh, this is this is how it works. Now, a way around this that I do know is to use something called a computed property. So we have these declared properties. We have this uh, property here, first name, last name. Now we want to use a property that's actually using some sort of data. Uh, it's being computed when this element's created. So we can say comma, and let's add a new property. So this will be full name like so. Now we can do colon again, and this time it's going to be an object instead of uh, just saying string here. Now you'll notice that we can declare some things inside of this. So any of these other ones, first name, last name, these could be written like this also if you want to give it more options. So for this particular one, we're going to say it's a type of string. Okay, and we're going to say it's computed, uh, not computer, computed, and we're gonna have a colon here. Now what we can do is uh, pass in a function here. Now this function is going to be in quotes. So let's just say compute full name, and it's gonna take first name, and it's gonna take last name, like so. Okay, now we have that. Let's come to outside of our properties, and we'll need to put a comma here because we need to add a whole new key to this object, and we can actually have this function in here. So we can say uh, compute full name, and it's going to be colon, and now we're gonna have a function. Now we're gonna be able to pass in the first name, comma last name, and let's close this off with curly brackets here. And we can simply just say return, uh, and then we'll just output first name plus some blank space here, and then plus last name, like so. So now what's cool is that we can actually use this full name uh, property up here instead of these first names and last names. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. Get rid of these spans, we don't want them anymore. See you later. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we now have a full name inside of these H1s. And we can refresh, and here we have my full name. Now, there's all sorts of types that things can be uh, inside of this properties object, right? So we have type, which you saw we have set to string, which also can be set to, like I said, Boolean. It can be set to a date, number, string, array, object. Well, we also have things like value, which can be given the default value. For instance, let's go ahead and get rid of last name here. I'm gonna put a curly bracket, and let's go ahead and say type type is equal to string again, and now value is going to be equal to a string, which is just going to be my last name. Okay, and let's go ahead and remove last name from the hello world declaration here in our index. Now let's come back to our HTML and refresh our page, and you'll see it's still getting Talinsky here, even though I'm not defining it in this hello world, it's grabbing that simply from the default value. However, if we come back and uh, let's just change this Zolensky now, okay? Refresh, you can see it's being overridden. So that's just a default value. Now, there's all sorts of other stuff. There's like read only, notify, um, there's observer, there's reflect to attribute. Now, these are things we're going to be going over in further videos once we get started making some more complex objects. But if you remember, we checked out the Google Map object here, and this should be a nice one to check out because there's quite a bit going on here. And if we scroll down, you can start to see some of these things. We have a properties where we have API key, client ID. So then we have things like latitude, where it's a type, where it has a default value, uh, it has this notify property and this reflect to attribute property. So there's a lot uh, being used in these elements that are pre-created for you. And it's gonna be nice to have these to follow along as we're learning this stuff 
stuff on our own. So cool, we now have started using our first properties in our own custom element. There's lots to do here and properties are gonna make your elements truly dynamic and flexible. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, please check out some of the other Level Up Tutorials videos. We have lots of exciting playlists from Meteor to Angular to Polymer 1.0 and even some web design stuff using Sketch App. There's new videos every week and check out the video descriptions for awesome ways that you can help support this channel in creating free tutorials.